Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Cache Memory Mapping. In this video, I will be telling you what is Cache Memory Mapping and how many techniques are there. Let us begin. About the Cache Memory, you must be aware now, right? What is Cache Memory? This is a very high speed memory and Cache Memory holds frequently requested data or the instructions means those many data and instructions must be immediately available to the CPU whenever there is a requirement. Cost of Cache Memory, this is higher than the main memory but it is economical than the CPU registers. Right. So, cache memory mapping, this is a technique or you can say a process via which the contents of main memory are brought into the cache memory. Contents are copied. There is no permanently erasing the content from a main memory and copying into the cache. So, just there is a duplicate copy which is available into the cache memory. Here you can see the mapping process. In this mapping process, you can see there is a processor. It contains registers, cache memory, main memory and secondary storage. Secondary storage which is the external storage. So you can see there are various lines in the main memory. So main memory that is divided into equal size. Here you can see equal size partitions. They are known as blocks or frames. As you can see how many blocks or frames are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Then you can see the cache memory. The cache memory is also divided or partitioned into the same size as of the uh, partition and it is known as lines. Here you can see in the cache of, uh, in the case of cache, how many lines are there? There are four lines. So main memory block, if it stores three words, so cache memory block, it will also store three words. But the size of cache memory, that will be smaller than the main memory. There are various registers in the processors and secondary storage, you know, the external storage. Here you can observe the cache mapping means copying the data from main memory into the cache that is known as cache mapping and virtual memory mapping is copying the data from secondary storage to the main memory, right? So during cache mapping about which you have to study in this particular process, the block of main memory, if uh, we talk about block number two. So block of main memory that is simply copied to the cache. So this particular block can be copied to this location, right? That is what the cache memory, uh, cache mapping. And what happened if uh, the CPU is requiring any data or instruction that is not available into the cache. So that is being uh, taken from the main memory and again copied into the cache. So you must remember that there is a data which is being available in the cache that is the duplicated copy means this block, block number two that is not actually brought at all from the main memory, right? But how the block of main memory is going to be copied into the cache mapping, there are various techniques. This much what you must understand what is cache mapping till now. Coming to the next, as I have told you that it is a technique via which we can bring the content or the block of main memory into the cache, ma cache memory. If this is the main memory, this is the cache memory, you can see the size of cache memory is smaller than the main memory and CPU uh, find out searches or takes the data from the cache memory itself. Right. But how this particular data is being copied into the cache memory, there are various techniques. So there are three techniques via which this cache mapping can happen. Direct mapping, associative mapping and set associative mapping. First is the direct mapping. Direct mapping, this is the simplest techniques. Simplest technique means 
each block of main memory can be copied to only one possible cache line this block can be copied to only one possible cache line it doesn't mean this first block can be copied to the second cache line or third it means there is only one possibility this is less expensive in comparison to the associative mapping and here the process of searching the word is that is very fast because only there is a requirement to find out the tag field matching in the next video in the upcoming video i'll be talking in detail about each and every mapping technique so direct mapping is the simplest one second is the associative mapping what happened in the case of the associative mapping any block of main memory can be copied to any line of cache memory if that is available at that moment means this particular block can be copied to this location if this is available means block can map to any of the freely available line of the cache this is relatively faster and easy to implement and the third one is the set associative mapping this is relatively complex here cache lines are grouped into sets as you can see here four cache lines are available so four cache lines may be grouped into two sets and a particular block of main memory can map to that particular set of cache only right but it gives better performance in comparison to other two mapping techniques so that is what the basics about the different types of cache mapping you must watch the upcoming videos also so that you will be able to learn in detail about each and individual kind of mapping techniques thank you so much for watching this video